You know, these enclosures that these animals have are just amazing. State of the art, $18 million reptile and amphibian facility. Oh my gosh, guys, this is incredible. I love seeing this enclosure, it's so cool. This is definitely a cool reptile zoo. Oh guys, you are in for a treat today because I'm hanging out at Zoo Knoxville and we are gonna be seeing all the species of endangered turtles and tortoises that this amazing facility has been working with. We're looking at the Unifera or the plowshare tortoise and I'm really excited because I'm hanging out with the curator of reptiles, Michael Ogle. Mike, hey. man, it's been a long time it since has, we actually yes. hung out. So yes, thanks for we, coming. I'm really excited to be here to talk to you because yep. there's so much to discuss with what these guys are doing here. So first off, I mean, the last time we actually saw a Unifera or a plowshare tortoise sure. on our channel was at the Turtle Conservancy okay. in yeah. Ojai. Yeah. Now, what's the story with this the, these group, this group of animals yeah, here? So this group was confiscated uh, in around 20, uh, 2010 in Hong Kong. Um, and it was decided it was a it was a group of, of, of 20 plowshares. Okay. And um, the the authorities in Hong Kong did not want them, and uh, it was unable to send them back to Madagascar. So they reached out to the Turtle Survival Alliance, and they were able to place um, four here at Zoo Knoxville, um, four at Zoo Atlanta. Those animals are now at Oklahoma City Zoo, um, and then 12 in uh, Iaza facilities in Europe. So, okay. Uh, so this is one of our four here, um, and they uh, when we got them, they were about cantaloupe size. So you know, as as you know very well, raising turtles and tortoises is is a is a long process. Yes. So even though they've now been here ten years, they're probably still five or so years away before uh, we're yep. going to be able to try to breed them. So, oh, amazing! Um, um, but yeah, it, it is our goal to to help. You know, is you know a, a common term in the turtle and tortoise world is assurance colony and. You know, with the with the plight that's happening with plowshare tortoises in Madagascar, these ex situ populations are, are are pretty vital. How many do they estimate are on the ground in the wild in Madagascar? I, the last I heard, the number was less than 200. That's so, incredibly yeah. sad. Yeah. Yeah. That's incredibly sad. All right, and so you know, these enclosures that these animals have are just amazing, state of the art, and that's yeah. part of the reason we're here, also, guys because we're going to be going into the new ARC campus. Yeah, can't wait uh, to show you. $18 million reptile and amphibian facility. What does the ARC stand for, actually? Uh, amphibian and Reptile Conservation Center. Oh, uh, well, conservation is a big key as to what they're doing here. I know you guys are gonna love this, so we're gonna head on over to our next species of endangered tortoise that you may recognize because I happen to have a few. So we're gonna talk a little bit about that next. Excellent. Guys, check out this amazing habitat they've constructed for their beautiful radiated tortoises. It's got a lot of topography, visual barriers, shade, native Madagascan plants, I'm assuming. I'm not a botanist, I don't know. Uh, unfortunately, no. I was hoping, uh, I was hoping, but these are actually uh, Texas native. Hey, that's well, that's all right. I could get. And look at this beautiful <laughs> little sub little juvenile radiata just cruising around, man. So <laughs> active, dude. Now this tortoise right here, guys, You've seen at my house, you know I love them, they're gorgeous. Uh, but Mike, you know, these are another endangered species from Madagascar. Sure. Now you guys have a special relationship with radiated tortoises here at the Knoxville Zoo. Why sure. don't you tell everyone just what kind of cool work you've been doing to help this species? Yeah, absolutely. So uh, we have been, um, the, the we maintain the stud book and the SSP. So we manage all the, the, uh, the population in the United States. Um, most, both at, in zoos and in the private sector, such as you know the, the animals that you have. And then uh, recently, we've worked really closely with the uh, Turtle Survival Alliance, and I know a facility or an organization you're very uh, closely work with as well, um, on a program called Radiated Tortoise Safe, which stands for Saving Animals from Extinction. So basically, it is getting zoos that were already doing this work, kind of get them to work together. Okay. Um, and so. Uh, again, since 2017, uh, the, the partnership with the TSA, Utah's Hobo Zoo, Oklahoma City Zoo, um, uh, St. Louis Zoo, of course, yeah. And uh, we've, we've really tried to help, um, you know, stem the tide. You know, as, as I'm sure you're aware, uh, in 2018, there was a massive confiscation of right. 2,000 radiated tortoises. And so we've been able to, to help fundraise for the TSA and work together on getting some grants. Um, but all in told, we've, we've been able to 
uh, to get over $100,000 raised to, to help this animal, this species in the wild where it, where it truly matters. Where it, right. You know, you know, that's the thing, like so many people think zoos are just places where people can come and see the animals. Yeah, and gawk at them. And yeah, right, yeah. right, which is, it's great to yeah. get people interacting with wildlife. Yeah. But there's a real element of actual conservation that goes to work in situ or in the country of origin of these species. And what we're gonna see in just a little bit inside this amazing facility here, inside the ark, is just how much conservation work you guys do with turtles and tortoises. In fact, Listen, I've heard of Zoo Knoxville being a <laughs> oh turtle, God. yeah man, being a turtle lunatic, <laughs> Zoo Knoxville is a big turtle zoo. Yeah. Which you don't often think sure. of zoos yeah, as, yeah. you know, caring much about turtles. Yeah. What is it about turtles uh, that the Knoxville Zoo just goes crazy over and why is it something that they focus on here? Yeah, so I think, you know, it, it, it got its start so the the herpetology department was kind of founded in, in 74, um, you know, which I, I was negative six, so clearly I had nothing to do. I was just born, <laughs> so he's younger than me, man. Well, he looks better than me for the Oh, years, come so. on. But anyway, we, um, you know, it started, we got some spider tortoises, we got our giant aldobrin that, that hopefully we'll meet later today. Oh, that'll be great. Um, and, you know, and then, sorry. Uh, and <laughs> I don't know how to get out of here, man. <laughs> I'm gonna become a permanent resident of the zoo, which would be great, because I know I'd be taken very well care of. <laughs> As long as you like serve the salad. Yeah, I love collard greens, no worries. <laughs> and then it really got started when, when Vern Tryon uh, became the curator here in 1984. He just really had an appreciation for turtles. Um, and then, uh, you know, I unlocked the door. And, and, and it locked itself. That's it safety, it itself. safety protocols. It is protocols. very nice, but yeah. uh, so he really was the foundation and, 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 and he um, got us started with bog turtle conservation. Oh, um, and wow. So, from uh, 1986 when he helped discover that species in the state of Tennessee. We Wait a went, minute, they didn't know that we, the bog turtles uh, were actually- Yeah, they were. They knew every other state that they were found, but they were not found in Tennessee. They were, we were the last state and it was in 1986. Wow. Um, and so from then until 2011, when he uh, unfortunately passed away um, from cancer, he devoted his life to bog turtles. That's and, incredible. And, and even in death, he helped uh, his book library, which was so valuable, he donated the TSA. And so every year we're able to put about $10,000 into researchers in the South working with That's Bog That's amazing. Turtles. So where are we right now? We're inside this beautiful greenhouse yeah, inside so the this art. Is, this is the art greenhouse. Um, it, is, it is focused on um, our, the Asian turtle crisis. Uh, so we have, gosh, well over uh, about eight species. Uh, most of them are critically endangered, but the rest are, are, are endangered. So we okay, have what do we got? Uh, four eyed turtles here. No way, Scalia? Yeah. Get out of here. So, oh my gosh. Guys, this is incredible. Oh man. Oh, there's, listen, I'm going to get a little nerdy right now. now I, there's I love protocol. this species. Yeah. There's protocol here. What is the protocol I have to follow as far as uh, us holding an animal? Oh, sure. Yeah. So what we do is we always try to, we, we definitely wash hands between species. Okay. Um, but yeah, you, you haven't, you haven't held anybody. So well, I did hold oh, that, the radiator. Okay. Yeah, well, so. well, we can come back and let you. All right. But yeah, well, we're going to get some cool turtle. shots of the four eyed turtle. That yeah, is awesome. If you want awesome. to stick your camera in there, Phil. Well, <laughs> unfortunately this, this setup is not waterproof, but oh, I do gotcha. have a waterproof. Okay. we were gonna get some okay. good cool. b-roll up okay so, so but this is this is kind of our herd oh, of, wow. uh, we have uh, one male and uh, three females um, so there's that's one of our girls there she is we like to refer to her as the most aggressive of all of them and she is she, huh? she literally kicks everyone's butt so um, the fun thing you know you learn when you're when you're building new exhibits you know turtles are generally not thought of to be the most acrobatic but you can see where we've had to add this along the back because the here. male kept climbing up and we kept finding him over in the in the larger pond <laughs> so wait a minute you're telling me that the male yeah, was able to to scale yeah. the cement yeah maybe in the corners so there, there guys there's so much work that goes into uh creating habitats now You'll notice also that these are really nicely done enclosures, but they're they're kind of minimalistic. These are yeah. pr predominantly for the breeding of these yep. animals. So this is a working greenhouse yeah, yeah, for breeding. This is, yeah, this is this is to kind of show the work that we do. So when folks come in, they're up on, on the uh, on the platform up there. So they're seeing us working in here. Um, we have a lot of great plants, um, you know, to, to make it into a, obviously a greenhouse still. But um, yeah, it's it's to show the work that we are doing. Um, that is and, awesome. And, and keeping it simple is is what we thought was the best way to go about it. That makes sense, man. Yeah. But guys, I love giving you ideas. Look at this. 
So that's a really cool way, just an inward inverted um, angle iron, it looks like. Yeah. And, and basically, it, and, and that lip well. here. Yeah. Now what's this? This is interesting. It's just metal it's, that's been um, covered with like a- um, Yeah, it's like- um, A grit. It, it's just plastic. Uh, it was just a clear plastic vinyl. And then they added, um, you know what you put on bed liners? Yes, uh, truck bed liners. that's what I was going to yeah, line liner. And then they just threw sand some sand on it. That's really cool. Yeah. That's amazing, man. Think so about it that. Pretty well. That looks great. Because when it arrived, it was white, and we we're like, well, the sun is just going to blind <laughs> the gonna, animals. Yeah, yeah, exactly. And it's just going to deteriorate. But yeah, they added this on here. And, Very and, cool. And it's, yeah. I hope you guys are getting ideas. This is the cool thing. Um, it's fun as a keeper myself, yeah. not as a professional keeper, but as someone who's always looking for cost effective ways sure. to keep animals yeah. or just ideas. Yeah. It's fun visiting other yeah. facilities. Oh, absolutely. Yeah. That's the, yeah. And you've been here for how many years at this? Uh, 21 years. 21 years. <laughs> 21 years here I'm at Zoo man. Knoxville. You're an old <laughs> man but you're younger than me and uh you know you started out what is a volunteer is Start, just... yeah i started as a volunteer and then got a part-time position and then just kind of life happens life happens well you know so yeah. many people ask me how do i get involved in animals how do i get sure. a career in animals yeah and i always say find your local facility yep. zoo yep. or wildlife sanctuary and volunteer absolutely and that is the way because you know they'll hire from within obviously uh, yeah. you went from a volunteer to the curator yep. of reptiles yeah a lot of you out there have dreams of doing that this is a gentleman who's uh, attained those dreams. Sometimes dreams can become nightmares, <laughs> but it's still a pretty cool life. asked me about a month ago, yes. Yeah, yeah, I hear it. <laughs> well, you know, uh, overseeing the building of this whole thing must have been a daunting task. It a was. Of, a lot of people coming together and make this For work. For sure, yeah, it was, it, was, uh, it, it was definitely a team from the zoo, from the architects, from the construction company that built it. I mean, it was, it was a three to four year process wow. to make this happen. And it as was I, worthwhile. And but. as I mentioned, it was 18 million dollars and that came from private uh, funding and public funding as well yep. and grants. Yeah. So just incredible. So who do we got over here? I see some Menoria, man. Yeah, yeah. Um, so this is our herd. Can I of, step uh, in or is, is that okay? Yeah, That's absolutely. so cool. Check it out, guys. I haven't had my Noria at my house for a little while, but we'll, uh, are these fair eye or are these brown? These are brown. Okay, so guys, check it out. Look at this. And this is so funny. Menoria <laughs> are almost like an aquatic tortoise. These guys love to soak and they come from very dense forests. They also call them a forest tortoise. Yep. And this is a species that thrives in high humidity, um, makes a great tortoise if you are keeping them in the southeast where it is humid and wet. And uh, do these, any of these guys have names? Do you name any of them? We, or? well, we could probably ask the keepers, I'm sure they probably have names, but no, I, 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 we, we, Typically only our giant tortoises have names, but as you know, these are pretty close to a giant tortoise. They are, so they probably should get a name. Uh, I mean, cause they are so personable. They are amazing. They're like slow methodical murderers when yeah. they want their food. Yeah. If you're not paying attention, they'll get a toe. Uh, well, and they will you, kill you. They will, they will. <laughs> they, in fact, guys, listen, the reality is, is if you are any kind of carrion, if you happen to like trip and fall in the forest, <laughs> They, they are non you. they will eat you. Yeah, it'll be a slow painful death. <laughs> yes. Just cuz they're tortoises don't think that they don't consume uh dead or dying matter cuz they will take protein when it's available. Yeah. In fact, many tortoises will do that, but I love seeing this enclosure. It's so cool. They are also very good climbers as they well. They are. Yes. I, this was the species that we figured would would be out already, yeah. but knock on wood. Yeah. Which I'll do. There you um, go. They haven't. They haven't done. It. You can see they. We have already had to protect some of the trees. Yeah. Well, this is hibiscus. I'm gonna be bad here and just yeah. nibble. See if this guy's interested. You interested in a little hibiscus? And this is a great plant that you can get at your local home uh, depot or Lowe's. And it's definitely a good nutritious uh, food for them as well. Let's see. Looks like that one's uh, not in the mood. Interesting. Yeah. Come on over here. Well, you know animals, they're going to make uh, complete and total buffoons of us. They always do. Yes, but that is awesome, man. <laughs> Look at this. Just the interesting shells, and I love these tortoises. They're, and some of, if I'm not mistaken, um, scientists say that they are, is it true that they're more ancient? Yeah, uh, that's, species? yeah that's what I've heard, that this is uh, the most primitive uh, extant tortoise uh, genus. So gotcha. Between them and, and uh, fairy owl and uh, impressed tortoises. Right. Uh, Very cool. Yeah. Awesome, man. This is a great greenhouse. Now, these are all species that you guys are actually working on yep. with uh, with conservation. So there are 
Uh, wh wait a minute, Sulawesi? Yeah. Get out of here, guys. This one's out of the water. Oh, am I allowed Absolutely. to go back in? Yeah. Oh, this is so cool, man. Can you imagine having this kind of access to a zoo? I feel very honored to be able to hang out here with everyone at Zoo Knoxville. And guys, Sulawesi, Forest tortoise? Forest turtle. Yeah, forest turtle. Okay, so uh, I said tortoise. I know better than that. <laughs> Look at its feet. It's got no elephant-like feet, but this is a really cool species. Why don't you tell us a little bit about them and what makes these guys so endangered at the moment? Oh, oh, there's a little oh, banana plant. Yeah, just, so we, we have, <laughs> so we have um, currently two pairs of, of Iwanawai, uh, which is the, the species name for, for these. Um, and Stephen Nelson, who works here with me, is actually the SSP coordinator, so he manages cool. them uh, throughout AZA. Can you just tell people what SSP means? Oh, sorry, yeah, so that stands for Species Survival Plan. So that's cool. kind of how we manage which uh, species we want to cooperatively work together on to breed to ensure their survival. And, and this one, you know, they are, they are so threatened due to deforestation and, and over collection for um, uh, the, the pet trade. That, uh, that yeah, they are they are now on the verge of of, of, of disappearing completely. Yeah, in Sulawesi, um, they're very interesting in that they, um, you know, if they were bigger like a Minoria, I'm, I'm pretty sure there would be no people living on Sulawesi. Uh -huh. They are very aggressive turtles. These are aggressive turtles. Yeah, which is you know which doesn't commonly happen you know in the in the turtle world, but yeah, when they it's the moment they hatch. They just stand up and they they will lunge at us as we're taking them out of here. It's, it's, it's That's great incredible. See, so. Do you have, have? We do have some babies. Yeah, you do have babies? yeah, we've, oh, we yeah, we've, check out yeah, some we've of had them, uh, sure. we've we've had some good uh, some good luck hatching these over the years. And so these guys are gonna uh, do they behave similar to like a North American wood turtle? Are they in water, out of water? What's yeah, their deal? I would say, yeah, I, I would say that is a, a, a pretty good. Um, you know the the details that I hear about them in the wild. During the, the evening, they're in the streams, kind of going up and down like you would think a, a wood turtle would. And then during the day, they'll kind of come up and, and cruise around for food. So. That's awesome. I'm just going to sneak past yeah, you. I want to show everyone this this female here. Is that what it is? Is the female larger than the male? No, the, the male it, is the larger. Okay, yeah, there you so go. That, that is the male. That's the a water. male. Yeah. Wow, look at this, guys. Look at the head on that animal. Just a beautiful uh, yellow head. And, you know, so many people get excited about turtles and the color. Um, but you know what? I, uh, these guys know I'm colorblind, and um, I, I'm just ex I'm more excited about turtles' personalities, if that makes sense. Yeah. Do you know what I mean? Like different yeah, yeah. species yeah, really like have. Yeah, the are, you know, they're right. like big lap dogs. Yep. And then this, uh, I'm curious because I, just seeing how aggressive they can be, or I've been told yeah. by you, Mike, <laughs> is uh, pretty interesting, man. Pretty cool stuff. Yeah, and so well, we have several babies, so we, we should be able to show off their all right, awesome. cantankerous attitude. So this is cool. So you guys see that they have a couple of herds of these as well. And each enclosure is, you know, designed with the species in mind. Yep. Um, but really well thought out, really nicely we, done. Yeah, we, we, we tried to make it, you know, as I mentioned earlier, just try to keep it simple, but still kind of uh, pleasing for the eye. Um, so we have this nice overlip of the platform so we can hide all the filtration pumps up gotcha. there. Gotcha, gotcha. It is well. Very cool. And then of course everyone's hanging out up there today. What's <laughs> up guys? We have reptile people there. <laughs> Looks like uh, NARBC, man. Right on, dude. So this is definitely a cool reptile zoo. Uh, if you guys love reptiles, you're going to want to come to the Knoxville Zoo. Because guys, this video is just about turtles and tortoises and the conservation work you guys are doing yeah uh, but there's so much more that's in the ark that yeah. we haven't even scratched the surface yet i think i'm gonna have to go in there as well but before we do i want to finish this video up yeah, for sure. by seeing the fruits of all their hard work yeah, here absolutely. um wait the arakan is it arakan uh, arakan forest, yep. forest yeah. turtle look at that so this is another forest turtle what is this well, that's the world's ugliest galbillifrons. Oh my God, <laughs> that's a galbillifrons, the flowered box turtle. But yeah, he's had some issues, but hey, yeah, man. We, we won't say the zoo that hatched them. <laughs> <laughs> it happens, it happens. Yeah, it does. That's it. You know what, even even in the wild, sometimes you yeah, get deformities. Yeah, they, they don't come out perfect. That's it is what it is, sure, but, but, but he is loved nonetheless. He is loved nonetheless. I've got, I've got a turtle at my house or, um, that I was given sight unseen. Oh, yeah. it's a perfectly healthy tortoise. And it's, of course, Lego, the redfoot tortoise. And ah. she is a Lego. If you can imagine what she looks like, but yes. it ain't good. But anyhow, we love her. And here's the Arakan forest turtle. Another very endangered species um, that, gosh, man, I mean, these guys, same problem. Habitat yeah. loss, yep. over collection. Yep. 
Same story with yep. most Asian turtles. Sure. Well, let's go into the nursery okay. and see what's going on there. Yeah, let's go. But look at this, guys. You got workstation here. The folks are all up there. This is a really cool. Actually, the exhibit is a behind the scenes of turtle conservation. Pretty much. Yeah, the whole exhibit, you get to go behind the scenes. I'd like to tell you that was my idea, but it was not. <laughs> no problem, man. So, yeah, Roll so this is, this, is the, this is the nursery room. Let's so, have a look. People yeah. love baby turtles, Who man. Who doesn't? Yeah. yeah. Oh, my gosh. So we have Spinoza here. Oh, could you can, yeah, uh, yeah, show yeah, everyone Spinoza, guys? Yeah. This is Especially awesome. Especially when they're young and Yep. Yeah. And look like a throwing star. That's it, man. Looks like a shuriken. I used to watch a lot of ninja movies. In fact, <laughs> I'm watching some really cool Mortal Kombat nonsense on uh, <laughs> on TV lately. But um, yeah, you can see those serrated edges, really pronounced. And when they're young, you know, I, my theory, and I'm sure it's it's general consensus, is turtles are bite sized. They're one yeah. bite. And you're when, done. Yeah, well, when you have that you sharp edge. that, you might let go. <laughs> yes, exactly. So very cool. Who else do we got? Roddy so, Island snake nets yep, too? Yep, so we had three of those hatched just about uh, two or three weeks ago now. Wow, now let me ask you, since I'm here, guys, I, uh, Tom Crutchfield wants to gift me some uh, gurry, how do you say gurry, gurry on me? Good, uh, oh, yes, yeah, you, you know, you're, you're pretty close. Pretty close, <laughs> the Latin's horrible. You're better than me. But I've had a hard time, I've had a hard time with really? baby snake necks okay. feeding. What do you, you need live food, right? Well, um, yeah, so we do give a lot of, um, uh, a lot of blood worms, and, but we've also used just, um, just the freeze-dried and, okay. and haven't had any issues. But we will also use uh, different sizes of crickets. We'll just pull off the back hopper legs and toss them in. Okay. Um, but yeah, we as you can see, we kind of cheat. We have this, uh, yep. not that it isn't already warm enough in here, but we add a, a, a an little, extra heat. Yeah, a little heat, and, gotcha. and that seems to help. Cool. So for us. Again, very simple, guys. You've yeah. seen this before. You know, these trays, they're easy to clean. Yep. When you're dealing with this many animals, very important to be yeah. effective and, yeah, and efficient. Absolutely. So, All right. Uh, we have older Spinoza. We have a, 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 a let's see, what does he want to hatch? So an almost two year old. That's a two year old. Yeah. Want. Now, if I got close, did, will he do what you said? Let's see. Well, as, as you said earlier, they, they don't do. like to make us uh, look like buffoons. So. That's so cool. <laughs> but you know, the most important thing, guys, is the fact that they're having reproduct reproductive success. Here at the zoo with yeah. all these oh, animals. I, I let us go right past. Oh, you did? I'm sorry. Yeah. No, no, no. Oh, these That's are the young ones. ones. Yeah, these are the younger ones. So. Oh my gosh. Yeah, so this one hatched in so different. March. This one hatched in March. That's a fast growing turtle. They, yeah, they put on some size pretty quickly. It's... You know, um, another species that we were talking about colorful turtles and so on, and I happened to get probably the most non colorful turtle <laughs> that the TSA had because no one wanted them because they are considered pretty. Yeah. Uh, I'm talking about USME's grandness. Oh, yes. <laughs> but I will tell you this they are really cool turtles. They are cool, man. They, they are so active, so full of personality, yeah. and bulletproof. Yes. And they grow like these guys guys like weeds they just get big fast and that, that's got to be a survival tactic if you're yeah. a baby tortoise or turtle the faster you can grow safely uh the better off you from be. getting eaten. that's it man unreal so you've got a lot of space to add to these uh yeah so, yeah so we are um you know we, we we just moved in just over a month ago so we're still in the setting up process but yeah we're gonna we have a lot of these tanks that we're going to be plumbed along the bottom for our awesome. um some other you want why that we have um the spouse and the spiny hill turtles what's this set up, uh, these guys are like crested leaf turtles. we yeah. just watched we just saw these at my friend charlie Morcroft's conservation facility a great species of turtle here from vietnam yeah um just a really really cool again and you guys focus on those Asian turtles. Man. We do, yeah, that in, in Madagascar, Madagascar is kind of our thing for sure. All so. right, well, very cool, but there's more they do as well. Guys, this has been a super sized video. There's, we've only just scratched the surface, but I really wanted to show off uh, what Michael and his team and the whole zoo has been doing here in Knoxville. If you are in Knoxville and you want to see an amazing reptile zoo, make sure you get out to the Ark at Zoo Knoxville. If you see Mike walking around, he's going to be wearing a mask, but if you see him, go tell him you saw him on Camp Cannon. He's a really knowledgeable keeper and expert on all these animals. Plus, we didn't even get into it. They also do, well, we talked a little bit about the wild turtles. Sure. That's how the conservation yeah. started. So listen, come visit the Knoxville Zoo. Let them know I sent you and have a great time while you're here. Don't forget to like and subscribe. Mike, thank you. Thank we you. are not done with you. We're going to have more videos coming up real soon. Talk to you later.